actually censoring the names of the people who were arrested. Uh, no, that's under lock and key. It's a huge secret. The police aren't allowed to report. They actually had to issue a statement saying it was a relaxed atmosphere there in the square, even though they were scared people were actually going to die. And they knew that there was uh, hundreds of dozens of reports of sexual assault going on. So there's an active cover up. And it's pretty clear to see what is actually happening here. It is a planned invasion, and they want everybody to just adapt to this new, violent, dangerous society that they have created. And then they will protect you by expanding their surveillance state and, and their militaristic state powers. So this is all the plan, order out of chaos. We can absolutely see what's going on. And you know what? Until they shut us up here at InfoWars, we're going to continue to shine the light where they do not want it pointed. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean we, this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up, from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But So, so this is a true fossil uh, source? I mean, explain it to me. It is, uh, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over 7,000 different medicinal herbs and plants. And, it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and... And during the summertime, and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Well, Joel Skousen was on the Alex Jones show today, and he gave a very clear directive for the protesters there in Oregon, uh, the gist of which is basically declare victory and come on home. Now, I thought that Alex offered some really key intel as well uh, for some other things that might be going on behind the scenes. But now the media has been focusing on... Uh, David, on this growing militia aspect of the story. And, you know, of course, they're going to go with that narrative because yeah. it really ties into the right-wing radicalism rising in this country. That's what we really need to be worried about. But they're overlooking some other terrorists that are occupying federal buildings. That's right. That's our right. bloated the, government. The federal government itself uses violence and intimidation to achieve political means, right? Right. That's the true definition of a terrorism. And, of course, there's this article that was on Drudge Report today talking about another sagebrush revolution. Mm -hmm. Uh, the congressman who is in from that area, who knows the Hammonds, had some very interesting things to say. And we need to understand what people are really concerned about. And so he really put this into a context. And of course, there's an even larger context than that. But let's put this in context as this uh, uh, congressman was saying. Let's go with this first clip. He talks about the overzealous bureaucracies and the Congress that does nothing. I have seen what happens when overzealous bureaucrats and agencies go beyond the law and clamp down on people. I have seen what courts have done. And I have seen the time for Congress to act, and then it has not. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. And we've seen this over and over again. And of course, what Congress has done, and I've pointed this out many times myself, they've abdicated their responsibility to write the laws to these bureaucracies. So right. they create a bureaucracy and they basically uh, create them as a fiefdom. They say, you're going to be in charge of this aspect of the country or the economy or activities, and you can pretty much do whatever you wish to do. And they run with that. Right. Absolutely run with that. Well, and we've seen also Harry Reid, you know, respond yeah. last year, basically calling these people exercising their constitutional rights terrorists. Yes. So I, I, he wanted to put this in context. He wanted to give them some examples of some of the things that have happened in that community. And part of the context is to understand just how large this county is. He said there's only 7,000 people here, but it is 10 times the size of Rhode Island. He says it's larger than the state of Maryland. And then he had this to say about recent wildfires and their magnitude. Miller Homestead wildfire in 2012 burned 160,000 acres mostly in this county, if not all, 250 square miles, quarter the size of the state of Rhode Island. That was just in 2012. The Berry Point fire that year in Lake County next door burned 93,000 acres. Last summer uh, alone, uh, we burned 799,974 acres across Oregon. That's both forest and high desert. 
2012, 3.4 million acres burned in Oregon. There was another fire in Malheur County, the Long Draw Fire in 2012, burned 557,000 acres, five times the size of Rhode Island. So 93,000 acres, 557,000 acres, 160,000 acres, all burning. The Hammonds are in prison tonight for setting a backfire that they admit to that burned 139 acres. And they will sit in prison, time served, and time going forward, five years. Wow. Under a law that I would argue was never intended to mete out that kind of punishment. Absolutely, because that right. law was passed to talk about terrorism. Mm -hmm. And as uh, he says in this clip, he says, hey, you know, if you were setting a brush fire in L.A., where you've got tightly packed people, then then maybe that was an act of terrorism. It should be addressed like that. But he, yeah, out in this area, they're talking about hundreds of thousands of acres just in that county that burned, and millions of acres that burned. 3.4 million acres in Oregon statewide in 2012. This is 139 acres. Right. Now, to contrast that, I want you to listen to what he says about how the BLM has conducted itself. I would call this the arsony of the uh, BLM. Let's play that clip. I've given you the size and the acreages that burn naturally. I haven't gotten into the discussion about how these fires are often fought and how the federal government frequently will go on private land and set a fire without permission to back burn. That happens all the time. In fact, in the Berry Point fire down in Lake County, they set fire on private timber land as a back burn while the owners of the property were putting out spot fires down in the canyon. I drove down there afterwards. They're darn lucky to have come out alive. There's nobody sentenced under the Terrorism Act there. Oh, heck no. It's the government. I can tell you a few years back in Harney County, because I went and held a meeting out there right as the fire was being put out, that the... Fire crews came in, went on private ground, lit a backfire on private ground behind a fence line that then burned out the farmer's fence, the rancher's fence, and burned all the way over and down into a canyon where there was a wetland, which would have been the natural break to stop the fire from the other side. You see, they never needed to burn that land. These things happen in the course of fighting fire. doesn't mean they're right. But rare is it that somebody ends up five years in prison. Mm. And of course, yeah. Leanne, what he's pointing out here is that you, you, you've got a massive wildfire. People are trying to take care of this. Things are going to happen. This is such a minuscule amount of land uh, compared to what the, the fire was doing. Uh, like we said before, hundreds of thousands of acres are burning. 139 acres got onto their land. But then what does the BLM do? It's not just in these particular cases that the Congressman uh, Walden was talking about. There's been multiple cases where they have destroyed livestock, they've destroyed buildings, not just a fence. I mean, fence is an expensive thing, especially when you got that much uh, fencing there. But they have destroyed private property, the grass, the buildings, the cattle, and refused to compensate people for this. Right. And they're not tried under any law. Nothing happens to the employees. They don't even get uh, disciplined at, at work for doing a bad job, just as we saw with the gold mine that uh, exploded and, right. and uh, polluted the Animas River over three states in the Navajo uh, yeah. Indian Reservation with heavy toxic metal. Nothing has happened to them. They're not accused of being terrorists, and of course they aren't terrorists. Right. But they don't even get penalized for their incompetence or their maliciousness, if, it, if that's what that was, because there are people that said that, that was a deliberate attempt to get a super fund there. They were right. warned in advance that was going to happen. There's a lot with that. But nevertheless, we see this over and over again. So there's one standard for the government. They can do whatever they want to to destroy people. But if you do something, you will be labeled as an arsonist and a terrorist and sent for mandatory minimums. He points out this judge, and we've mentioned this before, said, I cannot in good conscience apply this sentence to them. He's being pressured by the federal government because they want their land. We've pointed that out. And that's the fundamental thing behind this. They want the land of the people who are there, just as we saw at the uh, Bundy Ranch, they're the last people staying. Let's play this last clip real quickly. This is uh, BLM arrogance. Some of the agencies decided to reinterpret it. And the first thing they tried to do is shut down this kid's running camp because they said, well, too many, maybe more than 20, run down this canyon back up, as they had for many, many years. So they wanted to shut it down. So we had to fight them back, said, no, the law says historical standards. See, the bureaucracy wants to interpret the laws we write in ways they want. Mm. 
Hmm. That despite the fact we created the first cow-free wilderness in the United States under this law, and said clearly in this law that it would be the responsibility of the government to put up fencing to keep the cows out as part of the agreement, the Bureau of Land Management said, no, we're not going to follow that law. And they told a rancher they had to build a fence. Hmm. I networked with my 